So what I want to talk about today is the formula for kingdom success. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and I want everybody to turn with me to Psalm 1-3. I'm starting there because I want to be able to kind of, I, I want to, you know, it's, it's weird. You know, I guess I saw your post about Mary Kay and how excited you are. And one of the things that I sense, and I saw yours, man, I, 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 love, the, I, I love the picture, man. It was, it was cool. I loved it. I loved it, man. I, I've got some real go-getters in my church. I do. I've got some real go-getters. I've got some people, uh, I've got some be- people with a business mindset. I've got some very gifted people here. Um, I've got some very mo- highly, highly skilled people in this church. I, think we, I don't think we give ourselves enough credit. You know, because because of the neighborhood we're in, people assume people don't come to churches in this neighborhood with that level of capacity. And they do all the time. This church is filled with them. There's a lot of people in this room with gifts. A lot of people in this room, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, Reverend Deborah Smith, that's motivated to go to that next level in life, you know, despite whatever stage you're in. There's a lot of really gifted people here, Ken. A lot of intelligent people, Juliana. Just incredible people. The challenge, though, First Lady, is this. Until a believer marries their faith with their skills and their dreams, it will probably be more of a struggle than it should be. Now, I I need you all to get this. Um, And I, 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 you know, this kind of a shameless commercial, uh, Attorney Gillette, uh, who who now serves as vice chair of our board, Attorney Gillette is doing a thing on Tuesday he and I are doing this thing on Tuesday for our young adults. And I, I, I want to create a young professionals club almost. I want to challenge young adults who really want to be, who want to be mentored in how do you succeed in your chosen profession while, while marrying your faith. And, and, and it's exciting because, because God's given us people like him and others around here who are successful. Six o'clock, you need to come. It's going to bless your life. I promise you it will. And one of the things that I'm excited about is the fact that because I know there's so many gifted, skilled people here, the question becomes, though, how do you maximize that? we got a lot of young adults here. Dion, I, I, you know, I go on Facebook, not because I'm nosy. I go on Facebook to kind of see where you guys are. I see some of you wanting to do more. Some of you are, are like me. I'm, I'm almost 50. Some of you still feel like God's got some more stuff to do with you. So you're not trying to land the plane. You're trying to get more mileage out of the journey. You know, I still got concepts and business ideas and vision in my life. You haven't tapped out, coach. You and Mary Flynn haven't tapped out. Y'all still got another, a, a second win. So, so how do you do that? How do you, how do you maximize here? We had this amazing gift in you. How do you maximize this amazing gift? What does it take? to be great, to be successful as a believer. Because one of the things God started saying to me, Paul, years ago, a few years ago, and I want everybody to get this, you ready? Is my witness is my lifestyle. So when the world wants to inspire young people to buy its product, they portray fun excitement and the success side of it, it it's only when you see uh, the, the commercials about misery and poverty that someone's trying to dissuade you from something. But Tiffany, when the world wants to sell something to you, they show it as big fun. How, how, many of y'all, how, how many of y'all got those kids or had those children that you be sitting in the house and they start looking at TV and then a, a Disney commercial come on? And they'll never show kids mad because they got to stand in line three hours. They just show the happiest kids skipping through the park, eating candy, and playing with Mickey Mouse. I ain't seen Mickey Mouse yet. <laughs> he don't just walk up to me. But, man, they got Mickey Mouse walking up to the children, and everybody's so happy. And what do your kids say? I want to go to Disney World. Why? Because the mindset is if I can sell you on how much fun it is, I can get you to make the investment. Well, here's what's powerful. A believer who's miserable and unhappy and unfulfilled, you're not a good witness. 
You're not a good witness when you don't have a good marriage and, and you don't enjoy your life. You're not a good witness when you go to work and you got the worst attitude on the job. No, you're not a good witness. Here's the good witness. When people see you excited about life and motivated and forward moving and progressive, when they see your church accomplishing and achieving, when they see you connecting your faith to your promotion and your elevation, when people see you getting the most out of life, that's an amazing witness because you are the example of God's grace in the earth. You are the extension of God's glory. Your life is a statement that God can take anybody and do the most amazing things with them. You are supposed to be successful and productive. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to drive a Bentley and live in a 20-bedroom house. But what it does mean is that you will not live broke and miserable and angry and alone. But you, okay, y'all acting like y'all don't get it. This is where faith meets life. Who wants to be saved and struggle? forever nobody I don't care who you are I don't care how much you try to act like it don't matter the devil is a lie yes it does I need everybody to admit it does matter thank you come on admit it admit and admit the fact that if I'm going to walk with Jesus I just don't want heaven up there I don't mind practicing down here It's a mindset thing. And so the Lord showed me a few weeks ago a formula that we can use not only going into this year, but just period. And that if you do this, you will see favor over your life. Psalm 1-3, this is just kind of a devotional verse. Uh, he said, they are like trees that grow beside a stream. This is the word of the Lord that bear fruit. Everybody write down a post, a tweet, or text. One word. Productivity. Your life will become productive. You will not be waking up every day with nothing to show for your life. You will have the evidence of a happy marriage. You will have the evidence of being a saved, successful single who lives a sanctified life and enjoys it. You will have the evidence of your education. You will have the evidence of your investment. You will even have the evidence of your obedience and your faith. They bear fruit at the right time. This is the verse that's always challenged me. And it leaves, watch this, Deacon Smith never dries up. All of these dry seasons and dry places. And he said, no. But here's the thing that pushes me. Turn to Gillette. They succeed in everything. Wow. Here's what's deep, brothers and sisters Washington. If the word said it, Sister Porter, if the word said it, Brother and Sister Shelton, if the word said it, come on, guys. If the word said it, if the word said it, his was deep. It's hard to live the word out when you keep operating from a secular consciousness and you keep believing that there's always a loophole called disappointment and misery that can be interjected into the story of your life any chance you get. At some point, you need to wake up and understand God has ordained you to be productive, to be abundantly blessed, and an amazing statement of his grace in the earth. Now, watch this. But here's what's profound. When God gets ready to initiate a new thing in your life, when God gets ready to transition you into a new place with him, when God gets ready to release a promise, or when God gets ready to break the stronghold of an old suffocating season, he will always release a revelation or an instruction that pushes your faith to move. I need you to get this. You can always tell when God's getting ready to push you because he releases a word. He releases a word. Whenever God gets ready to take you to another level, Nemo, here's what he's going to do. He's going to release a word. Whenever God gets tired of you living in a suffocating old season, he's going to release a word. Whenever God gets ready for you to transition, he's going to release a word. 
He's going to release an instruction. He's going to release a revelation. And the moment that the revelation is released, the assignment of the revelation is to energize your faith. Why? Because your faith is going to be what's going to super glue you to the spirit of obedience teach pastor so the moment that God gets ready to take you to new dimensions and new opportunities whenever God gets ready to push you into a place of promise whenever ham God gets ready to break an old suffocating season he's going to release a revelation and instruction he's going to speak a word to you that's why you cannot allow the enemy to constantly inhibit your ability to hear the word of God because it's going to be the revelation Revelation, the word of God, the instruction of the spirit that's going to shift you. When God gets ready, Jocelyn, to open up a new door, he's going to speak it. I do not believe, and I've been teaching this for years, experience is not the best teacher. I lose time through experience. So whenever God gets ready to take you to the next level, he's going to put people in your life who speak into your life, and then who will walk you through the process of preparation. And what's going to happen if you pay attention and you submit in obedience, that word is going to produce what it says. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13. Look, listen to this. So then, obey the commands that I have given you today. Watch this. The Lord says, obey the commands. Watch this, Tracy. Oliver, obey the commands, Ken and April. Obey the commands, Phyllis. Obey the commands, Casey. James, obey the commands. Okay? Watch, the, watch this. I've spoken a word to you. Here's the word, Deaconess Quinn. Obey it, Steve. Obey the commands. Love the Lord your God, serve him with all your heart. If you do, he will send rain on your land not to flood you, but to keep you productive. Woo! Jesus. God said, when I, listen, if when you obey me, I'll keep you productive. So I'll send stuff when you need it. So you never end up hitting a wall. Teach man of God. And when you get to the point where it looks like you can't, you don't have any more energy, God will release another word that will instigate your obedience. If you do, he will send rain when you need it in the autumn and in the spring so that there will be grain and wine and olive oil for you and the grass for your livestock. You will have all the food you want if you do what I tell you to do. See that? When God got ready to initiate a revelation, a, a new season, what did he do? He spoke a word. Watch this. Luke chapter 5. Familiar passage. And what I'm doing is I'm backdooring what I want to show you by showing you that what I'm getting ready to share with you is a revelation that if you embrace it will totally propel you into a different, different dimension with God. Watch this. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, instruction, push the boat out further to the deep water, directive and you and your partners let down your nets for catch watch the instructions wrong push the boat out let the nets down that's it he didn't say catch fish 
I, I, I'm still trying to learn this. I, I'm still trying to learn this. Shelton, this is, this is one of your pastor's biggest weaknesses. Still trying to learn, Reverend Stewart. Just let the nets down. I'll admit it. This is glorious. I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm trying to get this point. Just let the nets down. Just wa watch this. Because wherever you put the net the first time, there won't no fish there. What you caught in a previous season was empty. Okay, you missed Revelation. You caught empty. Your catch was called empty. Denise, watch this. So let the net down. Simon says, we invested all of ourselves and caught nothing. But if you say so, See, here's the first thing. You got to start believing this is the word of God. Until you believe it's the word of God, then you're going to always be the overly analytical, overly cynical, unnecessarily skeptical person that always seems to have a, a sense of interpreting everything said instead of trusting what's being said. See, at some point, you got to shut your mind off, open your spirit, and then let your mind work in execution, not in examination. Your mind works in the wrong season. You, you trying to figure out what he's saying. And he's trying to get you to do what he's saying. So, so watch this. Say we worked all night. Caught nothing. Okay, watch this. God's trying. Man, Jesus, Lord have mercy. I need, even if this ain't you, I need you to speak to somebody that may be around you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. God's trying to reverse your season. If you've been, if you've been living in empty net season, he's trying to, Stephanie, he's trying to blow your mind by letting you see it was never where you were fishing. It was that you didn't mix obedience with your fishing. Boy, that, that, that's it. it. Listen, you ain't got to relocate to get your blessing. You just got to be obedient. Sometimes it ain't where you go. Sometimes it's what you do where you are. All right, watch this. Watch this. Let down your nets. Verse 6. They let them down caught such a large number of fish that the nets were about to break. So they motioned to their partners and the other boats to come help them. They came and helped them and, and all the boats almost filled and, and sunk. What, 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 what happened? Uh, verse 8, when Simon saw this, fell on his knees and said, Lord, I know I ain't good at this fishing thing. So the only way any of this happened was because of you. So I'm a sinful man. The goal of the catch was to get him the consecration. Okay, watch this. What's the purpose of the revelation? The purpose of the revelation is twofold. One, it stirs faith that has become dormant. Here's what's scary, Connie. Sometimes our faith becomes dormant. Here's how it becomes dormant. Because you enter a season where you're so skilled at a thing till you don't pray anymore to produce it. So God will allow a thing that worked in one season to not work in another season to get you back to a consecrated place so that you'll begin to submit at another level because it's not the productivity that is the ultimate goal it's the fact that you are so submissive to God till he uses productivity as a witnessing tool so he stirs faith these were professional fishermen. He stirs faith. Here's the second thing he does. He stimulates activity. So now of a sudden, you become re-engaged. Wow. Now of a sudden, people see a new energy 
of prayer. They see a new energy of study. They see a new energy of worship. So what God tried to do was to, was to stir faith, but to stimulate activity. Why? Because either you had become routine or you had become lazy. They used to talk about Michael Jordan. One thing said about Michael Jordan, they said Jordan, at the top of his game, when he was destroying everybody, when it wasn't, when he didn't have nothing to play for, he would get mad at somebody to motivate him. He always needed to be mad at something. And whenever he was mad, he would get mad at the, he would get mad at the, at the, at the janitor of the stadium. Something would make him mad, and he used it as motivation. Well, here's what's deep. What stimulates activity in you? What gets you to obey? What is it that God does to get you to make healthier decisions? What is it that's going to get you from being uh, also ran to a can't be denied? There's got to be a level in you, Chris, that's so incredibly inspired until you're willing to pay, to pay the sacrifice, to make the sacrifices and pay the price for what you believe God has for you. That's why I believe whenever God gets ready to do something amazing, he's going to release a word, Bradford, and that's what he's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to show you that if you obey me at a certain level and if you do the right things, I'm going to release kingdom success. Kingdom success then is when the world cannot deny who you are and they cannot take away what he's created you to do kingdom success is when you become a marvelous statement of how God can take a life and turn it into a marvelous example of his grace and his glory kingdom success is when you don't beg anybody for anything because God is your source and the synergy of your relationship with God inspires you to operate at a totally different level kingdom success is when you have integrity and prosperity is when you got character and abundance. Kingdom success is when you don't have to cut nobody's throat because God fights for you and if God be for you, it's more than the world against you. When you have kingdom success, even your enemies can't dog you. Ain't about liking me. So the formula then I want to throw at you. I gave it the other, other week. I'll give it again. I gave it on last Tuesday. I'm going to give it again. The formula is sowing plus confession plus wisdom plus generosity equals kingdom success. All right. Dion, you got to get this, son. I'm trying to accelerate your life, son. Sowing plus confession plus wisdom plus generosity equals kingdom success. Sowing plus confession plus wisdom plus generosity. Here's what I'm suggesting. You must simultaneously so confess, seek wisdom, and be generous. If you simultaneously do all four, Ham, you ain't seen your business prosper yet. I get this. Sowing, confession, wisdom, generosity. The Lord showed me when a believer does all four of these simultaneously, You will see the promises of God manifested in your life at such a level. Man, this is huge. Man, I hope we catch what God's saying in this house today. Literally, if you so confess, wise and generous. If you are wise, if you walk in wisdom, if you're generous, if you confess, and if you so, and you do it simultaneously, 
You do it all at the same time. Or you watch this. Or you begin to discipline your lifestyle. Because, see, the key to all of this is you got to discipline yourself in sowing. You got to discipline yourself in confession. You got to discipline your life by wisdom. And you got to discipline yourself to be generous. What happens when you become this person where you're sowing, confessing, walking in wisdom, and generous all at the same time? God begins to do things that will blow your mind. Why? Because all four of these are kingdom principles or traits and all four are a reflection of the nature of God so here's the revelation high tower when you when you reflect the nature of God you release the promises of God because the nature of God and the promises of God are synonymous watch this y'all still here okay watch this so let me walk you through what these are sowing S-O-W-I-N-G, sowing is the intentional act of God. It's the intentional act of God where you release to him. It's the intentional act of God where you release to him. You release to God through what he ordained. It's the intentional act of releasing to God what he ordains. It's the intentional act of God. Why is that? Because sowing is a God principle because God does it. Watch this. It's an intentional act of God where you are releasing. But here's what you're releasing. You're releasing to that which God has ordained. But here's what's key. As I'm releasing, it is because I am being governed by an appreciation for his love for me, not my love for him. If I give to him based upon my love for him, my love doesn't measure up to the sacrifice that appears to have be respond to be required. But if I give to him because of how much he loves me, now all of a sudden I will always have a big enough motivation to sow because sowing ain't based upon how much I love him. It's based upon how much he loves me. So all of a sudden, I start to sow or to release because whenever I think about how much he loves me, how much he truly loves me, how much he really loves me, even when, I, even when I'm going through a difficult time, I still sow. Why? Because he loves me. Why do I do it? Because he loves me. There are certain things I will, my wife will always get from me because her love for me is bigger than anything that I could ever give her. Here's, here's what's powerful. There has to be a big enough motivation for you to obey God in your giving when times are tough. And the big enough no motivation it's not how much you love God because some of us need to admit there have been people I said I love that I fell out of love with. But when I feel it on how much God loves me, then when it gets crazy, I say, you know what, God, you've been too good to me for me not to trust you in what I have. So, God, in this season of my life, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. You've been so good to me until, God, I'm releasing seed. For all of you who are inconsistent in your sowing, it's because you don't appreciate how much he loves you. That's really the, the issue. You don't really appreciate how much he loves you. You take his love lightly. Seriously. There's no way you can mistreat somebody who loves you as much as God loves you. Now, I know you're saying, okay, Pastor, uh, uh, G G Genesis 8. Genesis 8. I I'm running out of time. Genesis 8. I said that sowing is a, is a God trait. Watch this.
verse 22. You ready? What's it say? Stop. God says as long as the world exists, this is going to happen. So the person that uses it to their advantage... Come on, guys, you got to wake up and get this. He said, he said, listen, it don't, it don't, listen, it don't matter who don't like you. If you sow, they can't stop your harvest. No, really, when you sow, you remove the authority of your enemies. Your enemies have authority in your disobedience. Your enemies have authority when you disobey. They have no authority when you obey. Because when you obey, you're not... God, listen, God never puts you in the hands of your enemies in obedience. He only puts you in the hand of your enemies in disobedience. The most, Listen, anytime you read the Bible, God only let your enemies get advancement when you disobey. But when you obey and your enemies can't advance, so when I begin to sow, I'm walking in such a God mentality till now I'm changing everything around me to operate based upon the level of my sowing. Some of y'all ain't getting it, but I'm going to preach it till you get it because here's where your breakthrough going to come. It ain't going to come because you can praise them. It's going to come because you can plant. You want to know where some of y'all need to get excited? Your planting is setting you up for the greatest season of your life. Some of you need to get excited because some of you have been planting with consistency. And God told me to tell you, because you are planting with consistency, I'm not going to let you go under. I got your back because those who plant will not struggle. Watch this. Proverbs 3. This is another one of these revelations, Diane. Another one of these instructional moments. Watch this. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Y'all got it? What does it say? <clears throat> read, 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 read that again because I don't think y'all read it right. I don't think y'all, if because y'all had read it right, there would have been a holler in somebody's spirit. Um, I don't think, listen, 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 I want to, listen, I want to say this to everybody who obeys in sowing. Here's what's deep. Whenever you read that verse, even if you ain't a shouter, you ought to holler. Even if you want these reserved people, whenever you hear God promise you for doing something you doing, that, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Baby, me and you'll holler because me and you doing it. See, see, some of y'all need to understand. So for all, so I'm assuming that the reason why you didn't holler because you ain't doing it. And I would encourage all of you that's not doing it, don't holler. Just sit there and drop your head and feel bad. But, but, but for everybody who is doing the word of God, get excited because God just told you that if you honor me with the first that all your land produces, I'm going to fill your barns. Now, I know some of you saying, I ain't got no barns. Okay, whatever you got, I'm going to fill it. Pantry, cabinet, closets, gas tank. Tell your neighbor, whatever you need him to feel, he's going to feel it. Obedience produces the harvest you can't produce by yourself. I need somebody to do something real stupid. Put your hand in front of you. Open it up and say, man, it's filled. <laughs> okay, you didn't do it. Put your hand out. Act like you're looking at your barns and open the door and holler. It's filled. <laughs> okay, I'm, go I'm done. It's 849. I'm finished. I'll finish next week. Put your hand on the door. Open it and holler. It's filled. 
sowed. God sent me here to tell you when you sow seed generously, the God we serve is able to do a 